What's going on, everyone? Uh, Kane here with Magnetic Mag. We're sitting here with the legend, John Aquaviva. John, how are you? Welcome to Miami. Uh, I'm great. Pleasure to be here and uh, always nice hanging out. So uh, it's kind of like what I do, just make sure I'm here, there, and everywhere. So here I am. He just, uh, he just hangs out. That's just what he does. So you've been coming to Miami for quite a while now, correct? A little bit, yeah. Something like that. Yeah. At least a couple years. So what would you say, how, how has it changed since when you first started coming here till now? Well, uh, South Beach was was kind of almost a well-kept secret, other than, you know, for New Yorkers, and uh, certainly not as, as posh now. We'd go to Wolfie's Deli, you know, and, and kind of drive along the Strip, which was not really full of hotels, so, you know, you, you picked your battles, and uh, you'd go clubbing, and now it's really exploded, but, you know, I think, you know, in tandem with our, with our scene, it's a good thing. It's great that electronic culture has exploded, and I think Miami you know, embodies that. So uh, it's a good thing. You, you, we, we, we've got great memories, but uh, but we're in a good place right now. So, you know, yeah. What has, um, what? how have the clubs changed over the years? Obviously, you know, new clubs are coming in and going out. Uh, what what has, what have been some of your favorite clubs over the years? Uh, well, in Miami, of course, you know, uh, it was all about going to see Danny at Groove Jet and then the Warsaw Ballroom before that, where you'd have all the, the, you know the, the the guys playing, and then some of us techno guys would would somehow find a place to do a little you know one-off almost rave vi vibe. Uh, certainly, with the, our scene getting bigger, it's a lot more business-like. I mean, South Beach is pretty posh, and 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 it's a pretty penny. But uh, so there's less informality, you know. I mean, uh, but again, that just speaks to where we are in the in this time and place. So uh, you know, the rough edges were. We're charming for the sake of you know telling anecdotes, but uh, you know now everything's pretty prepared. But uh, the quality, of the production is is excellent. So you know you, there's that trade-off, but uh, it's, I think overall a good trade-off. Are you playing anywhere this week, or have you played anywhere yet? Yeah, this week, uh, keeping it easy, uh, going to do a, a little private party with a fellow called Rich Houghton and uh, uh, never heard of him. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, another up-and-coming DJ called Hito Love. So I'm, I'm going to play with Hito and Rich um, at the uh, Enter event um, at uh, Komodo. And then uh, just just hang out. So, uh, you know, I really uh, enjoy doing the smaller parties with my friends, for those who get it. So uh, um, I'm, you know, happy to be able to pick and choose. And, and for me, yeah, do fun, cool little events. Uh, keeps keeps me uh, young that way. Keeps you young and fresh. What are you, pushing 26, 27? Something like that. Something like that. Perfect. So, how would you say? Obviously, um, you know, your record label is like one of the biggest techno labels ever. How? What are your thoughts on the growing techno scene in America? Um, when it comes to techno and underground music, um, again, that's the benefit. You know, some people can sit here and go, "Wow, you know, the scene is so commercial." Um, I view it as, you know, from day one, we we were realistic. We weren't going to be loved or understood by everyone we you know we were always kind of catering to that small tail or those few freaks or a handful of fans whether it's that 10 20 percent long tail or just a handful of freaks so um for us with electronic culture being so popular when people want more they're actually finding it and i think that that's actually a good thing in america because the underground scene the techno scene there's more people getting into it so as much as you know people might want to criticize the commercial electronic thing um, it's still a great gateway and entry to the underground scene. So I think even in America, uh, the people who want to go deeper with good taste um, uh, is growing, and for me, it's thriving. So I think it's a wonderful ecosystem we have. So again, I, you know, I, I don't, I don't think you can kind of stick around without being positive. So for me, I think overall it's very positive. You know, we're in a good place right here, right now, and um, and we like our spot, and I like the whole world. You know, that that's out there. We're, uh, we are certainly sitting in a nice spot, sun shining, and the clouds are looking decent. They were It was raining a little earlier, but it's Miami, so, you know, that's what you expect. How is your label doing? Uh, great. I mean, uh, you know, Rich, Rich and I kind of went our own ways label-wise at the end of the 90s with plus eight. He went to do minus. I kept definitive a little bit more housey. So, you know, we, 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 we kind of like to have more than one thing on our plate. Um, and it's, uh, for me, I'm, I'm looking at almost phase three after... Really going uh, with with the international scene exploding in the 90s, and then the last decade, the whole you know paradigm shift from analog to digital. I really view this as another 
golden era of a third generation. Uh, it's fantastic to see so many people get into the scene, both as clubbers but also producers. Um, Again, that, that's a great thing, and it's great that the next generation is picking it up, and I'm, I'm happy to be a part of that. And with the label, support young artists, um, uh, as well as uh, just the whole, the whole paradigm. So, so we're, it's cool. Who are some artists uh, that are coming up right now that you are really interested in? Um, well, for the last 10 years, my, my boys being Olivia Giacomoto, one of the great unsung heroes, one of the great engineers, but then even the last couple of years, I've been working a lot with uh, um, Jordan Postrel, who, whose main... Um, whose main artist is Monroe. Uh, you know, we did a release together on the Get Physical compilation. Um, you know, uh, the Get Physical guys certainly are, 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 I can relate to them. They've been around a while and they foster that talent. And, uh, you know, jo Jordan's been, uh, you know, really, um, really someone on my radar. Um, and, and literally, uh, we release now, so that, that's, that's a great example. Do you have any advice for any new up-and-coming DJs that want to get into the techno scene? Yeah, your advice is here, boy, here we are, and trust me, it's earlier in the day. And, uh, you know, um, not even careful what you wish for, but, you know, what, work towards what you wish for, and then wake up early and don't miss your opportunity. Um, we, we got to where we were by not missing so much opportunity. So enjoy the party, but if there's like that open email or that open opportunity, you know, go take your interview. Don't miss your interviews. It's as simple as that. Don't miss your flights. Don't miss your opportunities because someone else will grab them. Uh, so, you know, I'm still, I'm still, here I am. I'm, you know, thank you for the time and place. And, you know, that, it's as simple as that. Don't miss your chances. Don't miss your chances. Okay. So we're going to play a game. Under our magical hat here, we have three different flavors of aromatherapy sticks. So I want you to pick one. And after you pick it, I want you to tell me what animal it reminds you of. What animal? Yeah. It reminds you of. Oh, man, okay. Three We're keeping it fresh here. Three-card aroma Monty. All right. Do you want to mix them up or should I? All right. All right. Damn. Oh, fuck. Forgot to I open it again. I don't think DJs are known for their sense of smell. I, you know? <laughs> All right. The magic bullet. There's the... All right. What animal it reminds me of? Keep it, keep it interesting. Like rave animals or real animals? Real animals. <laughs> real animals. <laughs> DJs okay. definitely don't put things All up right. their nose because that's bad. I've been set up, guys. All right. All right. Menthol mule. There's a bit of mule and there's a bit of menthol. I don't know. <laughs> I'm not much of an animal person. I'm a city boy and a clubber. All right. All right. Then what, uh, what city does that remind you of? Well, the freshness masks the musk, so, um, gosh. Uh, well, the, the, the menthol makes me think of, like, Scandinavia with skull, you know? Like, um, I just can't get over the menthol, but so, Scandinavia, but I know it's something more, more Mediterranean-like. Uh, maybe, like, maybe like Iceland. Like, it's, it's, it's up there, but it's also green and, and nice, right? Yeah. Reykjavik, Reykjavik. There you go, Reykjavik in an, in an inhaler. So, wrapping this up, uh, John Aquaviva, the legend. Um, is there anything else you'd like to add? Is there any 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 last minute? Where's your favorite restaurant here? Where do you suggest people eat in my in South well, Beach? Uh, actually, we went to uh, Tino's, one of the first sushi restaurants. So it's funny, Miami's become pretty famous for sushi. You know, we've gone to Zoom and all that stuff, but. Tino's the original, saw lots of DJs out there, kind of keeping it real and underground. And I think for, for, for me and for a lot of older people, you got to have one foot in respecting where you come from, who you are, and one foot in the future. So that was really nice. Uh, that was really nice for us. So, um, you know, keeping it real food-wise. So Tino's Sushi Restaurant. Thank you.